Okay, today I'm going to go over the, uh, the start of rational functions. I'm actually going to do three different things and I'm going to do three different videos. For the three videos, I'm going to use these same example problems. So you're going to want to use these same example problems for all three videos. The first video is just going to be about zeros. When we're talking about a rational function, we're talking about essentially something that uses a fraction. So a rational function is just something like this. Now this is the kind of thing that you would see in Algebra 1, so we're not going to see stuff like this. What we're going to see is something more along these lines. So we're going to be dealing with something that actually has x values in here. This is a linear, so or sorry, a constant, so we're not going to really see stuff like that. We're going to see stuff like this. When we're talking about zeros, remember that anything dividing into zero equals zero. So if I tell you f of x equals this, whatever makes my numerator equal to zero is going to be a zero for the function. So we're trying to find the x value that makes the numerator zero. Sometimes there won't be any. Sometimes there will be more than one. So it just depends on the exponent in your numerator to really determine how many that you're going to have. Sometimes there will be multiplicity like we saw before. So what I want to do on this one right here is I just want to take my numerator and set it equal to zero. So on this one, there is a zero at x equals zero. That's all I have to find. I don't have to do anything else for this, okay? That's a really simple one. A more complicated one would be something like this. I only care about the numerator when I'm talking about zeros. So the denominator doesn't matter to me at all. I'm going to set the numerator equal to zero. And then I'm going to solve. Square root both sides gives me x equals 3 and negative 3. So I have a 0 at negative 3 and 3. That's all that you're looking for on this one. It's going to be more simple for you if you can factor them out. So it would be a good idea for me to factor this to say x plus 3, x minus 3. In this example, it didn't really matter because it was easy to solve. But we want to factor these guys out first thing. I'm going to factor the denominator even though I'm not going to use it right now because I'm going to use it later on in a different video. Another example is something like this. I want to fa factor my numerator first. So this is going to be x minus 10, x plus 1. It's just a quadratic. I need two things that multiply to this and add to this. I set both of these equal to 0. So x minus 10 equals 0. x plus 1 equals 0. And I get 10 and negative 1. And that's it. These are pretty simple. The more complicated ones would be something like this. And just ignore this part for a second. Okay, when I'm looking at this guy right here, I notice that there's something I can factor out of all of these. I can factor out an x squared. Just kidding. This is the original, okay? I can factor out an x squared. So it's going to become x squared times x squared minus 3x plus 2. Still over x plus 1. This I can factor further. So this is going to become x minus 2, x minus 1. This x squared on the outside doesn't change. Denominator doesn't really matter, so I'm going to leave it off. I set each of these equal to 0. Since this gives me 0 
and has a power of two, it's actually telling me that I have multiplicity there. There's two zeros at the, at the, at the value of zero. This is going to give me two, and this is going to give me one. And that's the answer. That's it when you're looking for zeros.